Um, let's play another one that incorporates some, uh, some loud playing and a little bit of um, constant motion and a little bit of uh, chicken wing. Again, what I'm doing is I'm using my 16th notes. To my roll. So my roll is going to be at that same tempo, those 16th notes. Okay? Um, and that kind of demonstrates that technique I was working on earlier, which I'm, at all tempos and dynamics, I'm going to move between 16ths to roll. Okay, that's the idea there. Yeah, question? Yeah, when you're doing an exercise like that, does anything actually change in your fulcrum with the grip of your fingers on the stick? Uh, sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that it does. I do, yeah, I think that um, I, I can be looser for the individual notes, and I've got to squeeze a little bit more for my rolls. And that's sort of the basic idea. You know, I haven't really gotten into using the fingers today. And uh, I'd like to think that, in general, I, my fingers are along for the ride. That's kind of how I was taught to go after this. I know that other teachers will encourage you to use your back fingers to create speed, to create sometimes power. Um, I don't really subscribe to it. It doesn't mean it wouldn't work. Uh, but for me, I think I'm isolating, I'm trying to isolate wrist motion, okay? And then uh, this arm with my fulcrum being up front to create the roll. Okay? That's the idea there. Um, by the way, again, here's another excerpt that I'm trying to supply uh, a bunch of energy to. And I'm playing some unwritten crescendos. Um, this is the end of the second movement of this piece. The whole orchestra is, is really raging out. And uh, I'm going to add some crescendos in here that are not written to make this thing really jump off the page. Uh, that one's written, this one's not. That one is, but I'm, I'm doing some little nuance inside of this thing. That's another aspect of playing in the orchestra or playing an audition or playing with a band. It's that you do want to represent what's on the page. Um, you also have artistic license. You want to make sure that that artistic license is tasteful and within the confines of what the composer wrote. But I'm pretty sure that if I add an extra crescendo in here or two, there's no one in, you know, in the orchestra, the conductor, or anyone in the orchestra is going to say, oh, you know, that's not printed. That's not in there. I think it's okay to, to supply some extra ideas, especially if it contributes to the right uh, emotional context and the right uh, energy. So that's an important aspect. You have a question over here? Yeah. When you use the chicken wing uh, module technique, does that create any lateral motion on the drum uh, Wow, that's a good question. Uh, yes, I think it does. I actually think that's an advantage. Because what happens, remember that thing where I was over here and then, you know, notes over here and over here? If I'm playing and there's a slight lateral motion, there's not very much, but if I'm coming more to the center, we're going to get the second and third bounce. Theoretically, it will sound like this. They get louder. That's a good thing. Because really what, what we're up against usually is we've got this problem. Right? So each note is getting progressively softer. So now, if there is a little lateral motion, it might go to the center of the drum and create a little bit more volume. I think that's a good thing. Uh, I should ask Mr. Abel over here if that's what we, we were thinking about when we started using that technique. Whatever works. <laughs> I knew we'd agree. Um, yeah, but I, I would say there's not a whole ton of uh, lateral motion. Not a lot, OK? Uh, it's it's ever so slight. Yeah, another question back there. Uh, yeah, you were talking about uh, adding crescendos and decrescendos when you're playing with an orchestra. Yeah. But uh, during an audition, are they looking for 
more of what's written on the page or the musical license that you're talking about? That's a great question. You know, I, I, took some, uh, I took some liberties for my auditions in Chicago. It also happens that that committee is uh, the people that they hire, and as you watch them hire an oboe player and a trumpet player, are generally people that are, uh, take some liberties and are expressive in their playing. That doesn't work for every committee. So you have to sort of do some sort of magic mind meld with your committee and figure out, do they want this page literally or am I allowed to, to make some, some changes? I think what I was saying is that if you make some subtle changes that are tasteful, that I think any committee will find that attractive. So that's, that's something to think about. I think in general, percussionists, we don't, we're, we're not very expressive, generally, on our instruments, I should say. Uh, if you listen to a clarinet player, if you listen to a clarinet player play uh, a simple line, Every note has something new to it. You know, more air, less air, more dynamic, less dynamic. We don't really often think that way. We see sixteenths on a page and we're gonna go. That's probably the right thing to do there. But I think there are other times, like in the Shostakovich, where we can create some more energy with more crescendos. I think it's okay for any audition. I also think if you're that type of player and uh, that committee doesn't like you being slightly expre expressive, Maybe it's not the job for you. Something to think about. And I, I think that every professional would, would tell you that they won, the job they won doesn't mean that they would win the next one in, for a different orchestra. It's got to be the right fit. And so, uh, yeah, I, but I think it's important to think about balancing out being tasteful and being expressive.